Hello, IBM Environmental students. Today we're going to be talking about feedback loops, positive and negative, and how they relate to climate change. Let's get started. Before we get too deep into it, hopefully you remember the basics, that a negative feedback loop means that it's returning or staying around equilibrium, and a positive feedback loop is going to move further away from equilibrium. We can also relate these to st uh, stability, unstable versus stable. Hopefully you could pick out which one each one would be. Um, there are a lot of really good resources if after this you'd like to go to the following website um, if you need to envision some of the things we're talking about but we're gonna be looking at some word problems and you should really be able to draw some of them out represented in your notes so we're gonna have these feedback loops and here's two that we're gonna compare and you could draw out how it represents positive, how it represents negative. Remember, both types have a time lag, so it's not like one thing directly impacts the next thing super fast, it might take a while. So for our positive or unstable equilibrium example, we would, for instance, during climate change, have an increase in global temperature. That's going to melt the permafrost. Think about permafrost as icy areas in soil. Think about that in the tundra. Think Siberia. All right. And as that icy soil melts, right, it's going to release pockets of gaseous methane that are stuck in the ice. Remember that methane is a really not great greenhouse gas that has even higher global warming potential than carbon dioxide. So that methane that's getting released from that frozen and now melting ice is going to cause the temperature to increase even more, which further melts permafrost, further releasing methane, further increasing temperature. So think about if you were to draw this, it would be a cycle that's continuing to go spiraling, spiraling out of control away from equilibrium. That compares to this negative or stable equilibrium example that relates to climate. So remember, in increased temperature, we will have increased evaporation, especially in the tropics, but pretty much everywhere. Remember that evaporation is water going from liquid to gas. That increased evaporation will cause increased snowfall in the poles as long as the air and water are circulating in the atmosphere from where it's evaporating the most in the tropics, moving into the poles to become snowfall. Hopefully that snowfall will increase the ice caps all right, and create more ice. That ice cap increase will hopefully increase reflectivity, which is called albedo. So that ice, remember, it will reflect light like glass reflects light or a mirror would. And that reflection of the light versus holding the energy in like it would if it was blacktop or soil, that'll decrease temperature, which will then cause this whole process to slow and stable out at a normal temperature. So this is how if I accidentally went up a little too much in temperature, how this process could bring me back down to the normal temperature. So I think of this one instead of spiraling, spiraling out of control, this one has a, oop, a little bit of an increase and then the system has it stable out by bringing itself back down back to equilibrium temperature. Now this is only possible if there's a small increase in temperature. This negative feedback loop would not happen if the temperature increased super a lot because this circulation of water vapor from the tropics to the poles would not occur if the temperature increases too extreme. So these are our two major examples. We do want to go over some players that you'll see in some of the other examples we'll do in class. So one of the players that we mentioned earlier in the last slide is this ice reflectivity called albedo. Remember that ice, snow, and sand, they reflect incoming light the most. That means that that energy that could have been absorbed by the ground is now going back away from Earth. That is a good thing when we think about not wanting our temperature to go up too much. Ice reflects about 80% of incoming light. Water absorbs 80% of incoming light. So it is much better to have ice than water. Water is going to trap in that light and warm up the ocean compared to the ice, which will act like a mirror. So we really would prefer ice, okay? So remember that positive ice albedo effect feedback system. If I don't have enough ice, I'm going to have more and more warming. 
Ice is a good thing to have stable equilibrium. If I lose my ice albedo, I get a positive feedback loop. All right, and that would look like this. Increasing temperature would cause ice melt. Less albedo would cause an increasing temperature, more ice melt, etc. Spiraling out of control. Not good. All right, there's also a lot that goes on in the oceans. We're not going to go over it super a lot, um, but the really important thing is the ocean is in charge of removing excess CO2 emissions from the atmosphere, but it can only store so much, all right, because as the temperature of the earth increases, the temperature of water increases, and when things get warm, they don't hold bubbles very well. Picture your soda. Your soda is better at being bubbly when it's cold from the fridge. When it warms up, the bubbly fizzes out really fast. And that bubbles in soda is CO2. So warm things don't hold gaseous CO2 very well. So as the ocean warms, it won't actually be able to store the CO2. It'll actually release it back into the atmosphere. Not so good. All right, and then that atmospheric heat will transfer as well as the CO2, depending on how warm the ocean is, will transfer in and out of the ocean. Last but not least, we're not going to go over the super big details right now, but do know as temperature changes, that will affect how the ocean currents will move and how they can moderate global temperature. All right, other things that can be affected by temperature and be related to feedback loops. We'll see a lot in these feedback loops, clouds and water vapor content. Um, we know that warmer temperatures increase evaporation, and because of that, we'll have more clouds. Clouds, remember, are going to be able to trap heat. Some, because they have that absorbing water capability. Water itself is a greenhouse gas. Um, but they also can reflect heat right by reflecting light so they have a little bit of both so depending on which feedback loop you look at clouds you might see play both roles which is an interesting thing to keep in mind um, lastly do know that the amount of clouds is going to depend on time of year location and time of day because all that stuff is going to affect your overall um, evaporation rate sunlight and temperature um, Lastly, scientists, when they make their climate models, they include clouds, but it's not super clear do they really play the largest role compared to some of those bigger players like the albedo or oceans. All right, you made it. Well, we're going to do a lot more of this in class. We wanted that one to be brief because you've done a lot of large ones recently.